Welcome to Peculiar Stories, where we explore the fascinating world of near-death experiences and offer new perspectives on the meaning of life and death. Our goal is to shed light on these profound stories, deepen your understanding of life, and provide valuable insights to our audience. Whether you're new here or simply joining us again, we're thrilled to have you on this journey. If you enjoy what we do, consider subscribing to our channel to stay updated on our latest content. And don't forget to hit the like button to help our content reach a wider audience. So sit back, relax, and get ready to be transported to the edge of life and beyond. On today's story, Leonard claims he had NDE at the age of three as a result of being hit by a car. 38 years later, he remembered the encounter. He then proceeds to share his amazing experience. You simply can't afford to miss this amazing NDE. Without further ado, let's get to the story. My name is Leonard Rogers. My NDE occurred while I was a child, but I didn't recall it until after my brother died. That is hardly a coincidence, in my opinion. I didn't get to say my final goodbyes to him. I was curious about my brother's experience. Thus, without knowing what to expect, I just googled what occurs when we die. I viewed recordings of these near-death experiences that came up on YouTube. I then looked at one of the men named Ian from New Zealand. To be honest, I was watching him casually at first. But then I focused on him attentively, long enough to notice his expressions. It was then I understood, this guy's not telling a narrative, he's reliving it. His expressions were genuine. I got borderline obsessed with these recordings, hoping to see what my brother had gone through. I believed if anyone knew, it would be those who had caught a glimpse. I then found another video that Ian had made, but this time it was a video where you could see what he was talking about, almost like a mini-movie. I'd already seen this video a couple times at that point, but something clicked this time. I was thinking, I remember that, while Ian was showing me what he spotted in the darkness. Then, realizing what I had said, I exclaimed, What do I mean? I remember that? I took a step away from the CPU and went outside to smoke. I remembered being hit by a car when I was three years old while following my uncle across the street, unbeknownst to him. The memories returned to me like a ton of bricks. That was death. I couldn't believe it, and to be honest, I still can't. After getting hit, I found myself looking up at the car's bumper, seemingly motionless. I couldn't even blink, let alone move. I heard an audible voice exclaim, let go, all of a sudden. I immediately felt what can only be described as a tickle, a throbbing vibratory type of sensation, and found myself standing up. A figure or person was calling out to me from across the street. I say her because I felt as at ease with her as I would with my own mother. I recall being a little nervous about crossing the street to get to her. I was terrified of getting hit again. The individual assured me, not audibly, but mentally, that I would be fine. Fine. I'll simply go over there, I thought. This is where I began what I now know to be a life evaluation. I saw a photo of myself, but a few years older. Then another picture, and another until I had images or films flashing by me so quickly that I felt dizzy. It's almost as if the photos or movies were downloading as I viewed them. My pain was probably observed because things slowed considerably, followed by a sudden standstill or stop. I was now staring at a photograph of a young man. I was shocked by the notion that I was staring at my son as I glanced at this photograph. I couldn't believe that was my child. I was three years old and staring at a picture of my son. Things eventually resumed but at a considerably slower pace. I recognized many unknown persons and places by name. After it had finally ceased, I found myself in a dark cave or room. I recall feeling as if I shouldn't have been there, much like a child who has walked in on his parents. The darkness terrified me. There was something in it that reminded me of Ian's video portrayal, with eyes gazing at me. I suddenly felt a nice breeze, and with it came an unbelievable peace. I was no longer terrified of the dark. In fact, it was as if I had forgotten what fear was. I was suddenly thrust back into the accident scene. I was accompanied by the person who had summoned me. I felt like I was holding hands with this person while I examined my body on the ground. The driver of the car that hit me was bending over me, frightened and terrified. But I was thinking, why are they worried about that? I'm okay. It upset me that he was concerned about the object on the ground. They don't know anything about where I am and have no idea it even exists. I remember thinking. I was just three years old at the time, yet some of the things I was thinking would have come from a much older mind. You'd think that because I'm so young, 
I'd just be aware of what I see. I might have been thinking about it, but I wouldn't have been able to think about it the way I was, deduce what was going on, or analyze any of it, despite having the brain of a 10 to 15 year old. I'm not sure how time differs between this realm and that realm, but it feels like I was there for a long time, even if it was only one to 10 minutes. After becoming bored or disgusted with the people and their emotions over that thing, my body, on the ground, I remember traveling to another dark location. It was as if I was only there to think. I could feel the presence of those about me, but I couldn't see them. I recall hearing the phrase, go to the light, which appeared to annoy me. They were getting on my nerves, and I had to admit that I was purposefully ignoring them. My perspective shifted at some point. I then felt myself moving or floating up and conversing with someone. Perfect is the only word that can describe him. I can't describe him completely because I couldn't see past his neck, but I can describe his face. His appearance was flawless, but it was his eyes that drew my attention. His eyes were stunning. The word beautiful doesn't do them justice, so I'll try to describe them. Consider minuscule rays of sunshine that are all the hues of the rainbow instead of white or yellow. Those eyes were not just the most stunning I'd ever seen, but they were almost hypnotic. I couldn't look anywhere else as we communicate telepathically. I don't recall the entire conversation, other than being informed that I wouldn't remember everything. Indeed, I was assured that I wouldn't recall the entire experience, which I found pretty alarming. He asked me why I wanted to return just before returning to my body. My original response was that I wanted to assist my mother raise my younger brothers, which is incredible given that my mother only had one of my three brothers in me at the time. He started snickering and questioned why I wanted to come back. This time, my response was that I wanted to leave the world a better place. To think that I might have lied to or tried to deceive Jesus, knowing that those eyes were not only looking at me, but evidently right through me and into the depths of my soul. Certainly, as I've come to realize, I believe it was Jesus. I know that as I started asking about my mother, I was quickly returned to my body. All I could think was no, no, no until I was about five inches over my body, face to face, then looking up at the bumper again. I do recall returning to my body. It seemed like I was being placed within a thick clay shape or into something hard but hollow, if that makes any sense at all. But it is the only way I can describe it. My mother was there to fetch me up the next thing I knew. She slung me over her left shoulder. I know I wasn't crying. In fact, that's the only thing I've remembered over the years. I knew I hadn't been crying whenever there was a discussion about the accident, but I couldn't recall why. I didn't cry until my mother was holding me in her arms, hurriedly checking me out, and she was crying. That scared me, and the tranquility that had returned to me, the reason I had felt no need to cry, vanished totally. Maybe something just happened to me. I recall thinking, what was it? And I burst out crying. I know it seemed like the whole affair took much longer than a few minutes. In fact, if I had to translate it into a measurable time scale, I'd have to declare that every minute here is equivalent to a year there. Another thing, at some point during my experience, I believe near the beginning, but the exact timeline is hazy, I was shown images and people that were unfamiliar to me. And one particular picture that everything seemed to pause on I was shocked, looking at this picture because I mistook him for my son. Most people have a life review after they have lived their lives, but in my situation, I was looking at a future life. I was shown the full picture of the life I could lead. I say perhaps because we all seem to have free will, which makes not only my future, but everyone's future fluid and changeable. That would involve my brother's sad death. With that in mind, when my mother arrived home with me for the first time and placed me on the floor to play with my younger brother, I did a double take, bewildered, yet overjoyed to see him. It was as if she was saying, Hey, I've already grieved for you, but how am I looking at you now? In any case, I won't remember any of this in 38 years. I believe I recalled it for at least the first few years of my life, but as the years passed, it was pushed farther and further back until it was all but forgotten, that is, until my brother died. That's no coincidence to me, because I don't think I could have gotten over his death without that memory returning. I haven't gotten over it, but I can deal with it a lot better now. I went from being depressed to envious of him. Wow! I now wish I had remembered before he died. I honestly believe I could have soothed him about death, 
since he was obviously terrified. But I'm sure he found out. Watch this NDE next about a woman who met a dark figure that took her to a place beyond her imagination.